Hi everyone, I in this one I am going to be using OpenAI for the language model. So you can see what we are going to be bringing in. So the first bit is just loading the multiple documents. And this is pretty simple. This is basically we just pass in a folder. So I have downloaded here a set of new articles. These are basically articles from TechCrunch. You can put any text file in there. If we have a look in here, we can see, okay, we have got quite a few of them in there that we are actually getting the information from. So, first of all, we are just going to basically set the directory is where we are going to get in. And we are just going to close the files. So, we just doing starboard text. If you are just doing one text long text file, you would just do it like this. If you are doing PDF files rather than use a text loader, you would use the PDF loader. You had changed this here. That's pretty simple for any of the files. If you are using markdown files, you just change this to empty. Alright, so we bring those in. We then split up our data into chunks. And because it's short enough, we, are, we have got our documents here where it's basically giving us a chunk of the info that was in a particular article all right next up we want to create a database so here we are creating the vector store and we are going to store it in a folder called db so we need to basically initialize the embeddings first like i said before here we are using open ai we will swap these out for some local embeddings in the near future and then we are just going to basically go Chroma from documents we are gonna pass in the text we are going to pass into the embedding and we are just going to pass in the directory that we want to persist this in once we have done that it actually saves out to database and you will see that in there we will have an index we will have a whole bunch of different things in there as well and that's basically now coded all of the documents that we put in so that we can actually just get rid of this if we just basically persist this out and then we can re-bring it in so i will show you at the end actually deleting it all and loading it again as well but the idea here is just to show you that once we have got that on our disk as long as we save that somewhere, we can reuse that. We don't have to go and embed all the documents. Now that might not be a big deal when we are using 10, 20 text files. But if you had a thousand files, then were quite long. You don't want to be doing that every time you launch your app you want to save that somewhere and then just use it later on okay once we have got this vector db we are going to make it a retriever and just to show you once it's a retriever we can just say get relevant documents and i can just pass in a query here so the queries i've got on the way i've come up with them is i am just looking here i looked at the titles assorted they mentioned something about data breaks something about cma generative ai something about hugging face in there and one of them was a pandu or something so that's where i basically come up with the questions for those from once i have got that it will generate just by default it's going to return four documents so in this case i'm just going to use two but you can play around with the number that you will want for this if you are curing a lot of information we often find that around about five is a good number that you want to get the top five in the future we will look at things like multiple indexes where you you would bring in a different ones from multiple indexes as well but here we are going to basically just set it back to two so all i need to do is just basically and the retriever i can just set it k is equal to two the search type i'm using is similarity search and you can see here I, if i look at the search arguments i can see okay then i've got the key close to them so at this stage my vector db and my retriever and that is all set up now i just want to do the actual language model chain part so here i am basically just 
going to make a retrieval QA chain. And here we are going to pass in our open AI. We are just going to stuff it in because we know that the two in this particular case, two of the contacts with them being a thousand characters each, we are going to be fine for a length and stuff like that there. So we then pass in our retrieval. All right. And we are going to return documents equal true here. Now I could set for both equals true. If you want to see more about what's going on during the chain or during the agent, all I'm going to make a little function here just to take the output of these and basically just print it out nicely so we can see the result that we are getting back from the query and also the source documents that what they are. So here we come along and we ask our first query how much money did Pandora is straight away? You can see that the two source documents it brought up. One's about power supply chain, startup Pandora lands 30 million in a series B, round bringing its total raise to 45 million. So that's one clearly done. It and we have got the sources here too. So originally these were just HTML files too. So we can actually process this to basically just have a link back to the document. If we have 10,000 articles and we wanted people to go back to see the original source HTML page, we could put that here quite easily. If we look into this a little bit, so here if I say, okay, what is the news about Pando? and I don't run it through the function for for tidying it up we can see that okay we get our result back so the news is Panda raised 30 million series B the money will be used to expand the global sales tells us a bit more about even a bit more about information but we can also see then now we get the source actual source documents back here and we can here is where we are getting this this is the top document in this case and this is the second top document in this case now this one seems to have the 30 million and it also says who led the round sure enough it's able to do it quite easily picking some other ones just to see that it's not going to always return this what did databricks acquire okay tells us databricks acquired a data governance platform with a focus on AI. What is generative AI? So we are getting the answer back from two different articles in this case. And the reason why I came up with, the, with that was there was one article about CMA is a generative AI review. So I was curious to see if that was come back and it didn't and it didn't so when i ask who is cma sure enough here i am getting that okay cma stands for competition and markets authority use the following pieces of context to answer the question at end if you don't know the answer just say so you don't know the answer to him try to make it up so that's basically it to just check that this is working we can come along and zip rdb up delete it get rid of the vector store delete the actual folder i restart the runtime and you can see now when i restart the runtime and come in and unzip at first i need to have to put in my open ai key again this time i have gone for the turbo api for the language model part so we set up the db by just pointing at the persist folder which was named db we need to set the retriever here we could actually just put that on the end there to make it easier and then here i am setting up to the turbo lm so that we could use that if you if we wanted to setting up our chain again now with the turbo lm so we using gpt 3.5 turbo api here everything else exactly the same running it asking the same question sure enough it's getting the answer back now if we look at the prompts for the version when we are using the turbo api you will find that just printing out the same prompt as before 
won't work we will run into issues so here we basically have to look at the system prompt and the human prompt and this is the system prompt here right this is basically going through the first message is the system message in there and this is used the following pieces of context to answer these questions and then we pass in the context and then we pass in the question in the human part so that shows you using the turbo llm as well all right this sort of gets us to up the speed a little bit more of using a proper vector database not just storing it purely in memory but now getting it on disk anyway as always if you have questions please put them in the comments below i found this useful please click and subscribe i will see you in the next video bye for now Thank you.